Hey guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing. Today we're going to look at Toner Plastics Rich Teal PLA. So welcome back guys, like I said, we're taking a look at Toner Plastics Rich Teal PLA. And you should see, it's very rich and it's very teal. So, what I'm going to be doing here is, if you're new to my type of review videos for filament, is I really test for printability how easy is it to print with, what are the settings, what are optimal settings that you might be looking at with yours, kind of as a base. It's different for every printer, but I might be able to give you like a base of where you're gonna be at to start printing at this. So let's take a look at the packaging and everything and we'll get to printing. Right off the bat, they've got a sticker on here, donor plastics, give you their address, the barcode for it, it's one kilogram, the lot number, and then it's PLA 1.75 millimeter rich teal. There are no print settings on the back or the front, so I'm gonna have to go to their website and see or check my email. They might have sent me some uh, starting temps what to start with, but uh, either way, I'll go to the website, see what they recommend, and we'll do some tests to figure out what the best one is for me. Normally, PLA, I usually print at 205, usually works out pretty well. Some, a few of them are a little lower and a few of them are a little higher, but 205 for me personally is a good starting point. Let's bust it open. So as we are gonna open this up, Again, this is how it came to me, so this was sent from them. I don't know if, if you were to buy a retail package that this would come in a box, but mine didn't. This, I also received a Pet G from them. That's a different video for the PLA, but these both came in a box together, and that's that. So, it's in a shrink wrap packaging, like all the other ones. Good and tight on there. Here we have our desk pack that popped out. This one doesn't have too much of a smell to it. Some, some PLAs I pull out and they've got that really plasticky smell. Some have more of it, some have less of it. This one's about in the middle. Um, nice and smooth. So we have the end of our filament kind of tagged in here. Some country, um, countries, <laughs> some companies like to tape it. Some, some companies like to weave it in there. Weave it in there seems to be the best. And yeah, so it's a solid spool, one piece. You know, I, I generally try to look at that. Some of them uh, are actually bolted together and those would have a tendency to actually, you can have grab both sides and you could like shift the spool, which is never a good thing, uh, especially if the screws come loose, you have to constantly tighten those down. But again, it's not an issue with this one. Uh, it is, does have the grooves on the side of it. This is something to be careful with if you have a printer like the FT5 here. Depending on the spool holder you're using, when this spool gets up next to those um, socket head screws, it actually can catch on one of these and either hold it or jerk as it goes and then all of a sudden you know, go through and then you'll you know, lose several layers because your nozzle wasn't able to pull filament. So again, it, it's not every printer is that way. I've had that issue with a few spools on the FT5, so there's something to be aware of just so uh, you know what type of spool holder you're gonna be looking for uh, whether you do the clamp ones or anything else. But anyways, that's just something to be aware of with these type of spools. If they're not flat, please be careful with that. Uh, yeah, so again, I have to go on their website and see what their settings are. We're gonna start at 205, start around 60 millimeters a second. Simplify 3D usually changes that anyway, so my speed is 4,500 millimeters per minute on the FT5, which is just shy of that, I believe, uh, whatever you do the math on that. But yeah, so this should be fun. So again, this is Turner Plastics Rich Teal PLA. Let's start printing and see how it turns out.
get started. I did, uh, my voice is a little bit lower now. I'm a little sick, so I hadn't v filmed anything in the past basically two weeks uh, until today I'm starting back up again. I'm feeling well enough to do so. I also hurt my back, so filming and standing and doing all the prints was kind of out of the question. But, uh, so I apologize if the audio is a little bit off on this. Uh, you kind of just have to bear with me for now. Whew, gotta say, those are some long prints. Let's take a look how they turned out. The very first one is a dragon. I think this is Area of the Dragon. This model is fantastic. I've seen people print this. I've been dying to print it for such a long time. And I wanted to print it at max size for the FT5. And basically this is it. I think maybe had 10 millimeter height, but I wanted to be safe because I didn't want, you know, maybe I measured incorrectly in the FT5 to see what exactly my max height is. So I lowered it down a little bit. I believe this was 270 some percent size of the model. And it came out beautifully. I mean, we had a few little issues here. So I'll zoom in, let's take a look at these issues and what I like about it. Okay, so right down here on the pedestal, there's a few little hairs here that uh, I guess the, the print started over here where there was no filament or nothing there for it to hold on to. So it missed that, uh, which was fine. There's a little bit of drooping here on the tail you can see. And on the back of the arm, there's a little bit of issue going on there, kind of like pimpling where it starts and stops the different layers. Other than that, I mean the belly, totally smooth. Chin, came out great. The wings, I mean look how shiny this is, okay? This is 0.2 layer height with, uh, with this, I usually do 20% infill honeycomb. This one actually might have been 30%. Yes, this was 30%. Did a little bit higher on this one, got a little more oomph to it. And it, you know, I set my FT5 at 5,500 millimeters per minute. Simplify 3D takes it from there and scales it down or up, however it needs to. But I mean, the points here, perfect points, perfect points on the wings here on the uh, the talons on the wing came out great. The talons on the feet all came out really, really nice. This this layer right here, this top layer, beautifully flat. You know, uh, there was a few under extruded parts. So right here, you can see a little hole. There's another one over right here is where it was. Very small issues, but the FD5 handled this filament great. This filament printed great. This was awesome. So let's take a look at another model. Okay, here we have the female knight. She turned out really good. So this one, I wanted to see, okay, how would the FD5 handle this filament at 0.1 millimeters? Excellent is the word. So she is semi-hollow, but this actually, this model weighs like nothing. This is 0% infill in the entire model. So yes, it does have the cavity, but inside this cavity in here, zero infill. Four bottom layers, five top layers. I want to make sure that the top of her came out great. And she did. Few issues, which I, uh, I printed this with zero support, and you will have issues with printing this without support. Now, it won't come out perfect, but it would be damn close to it. And some of those issues were here on the, the bottom of the shoulder pads. A little bit of drooping there because the filament was almost printing on nothing. Uh, this shoulder pad had the same issue. A little bit here on the back of the sword. And actually, the top part of the sword comes off because this was actually set kind of like this or like this, whatever it was. Yeah, it was like this beside the model when it printed. Well, it failed when it was printing that. So I had to redo it by itself. And in order to get it to print, I actually had to do 20 skirts, 20 skirts, two layers high in order to get this because I printed it twice. It failed both times right here when it got up to the pommel. Uh, simply also because my nozzle, the uh, fan for my nozzle is not straight on the nozzle. It's more of a flat. So it wasn't having direct cooling which was not cool, no pun intended. And it failed. So using the 20 skirts with too high, held it down perfectly, no issues there at all. Um, I did have two layer shifts, which you can see, you can kind of see right here, and right here, two little layer shifts. Really hard to see, but they're there. But look how dull the color is. Not the dull, but it's just more matte. And then look how shiny in comparison to point two is. So point one, point two. Um, both of these took an exorbitant amount of time to print, uh, but it was well worth it each time. So again, point two layer heights, 
6.1 layer height, super shiny, very matte finished. But I like it, it came out well. Uh, this is pretty great filament. Let's look at a couple other prints. So this is a Paw Patrol badge cookie cutter. This is for Everest, for those of you that don't know, for those of you that do, uh, yay for us. So this is a cookie cutter that I found on Thingiverse and we have a friend that has a uh, birthday party coming up soon so we're gonna make them some uh, cookies, hopefully. And these are really good models. Uh, this model actually was one of the best ones because these, uh, uh, the actual shape here was wide enough for two layers and some infill. For, so for one perimeter on the outside, one perimeter on the inside, and then infill. Versus, let's look here. So here is uh, Chase. Now his, you can see there's a gap here between the outside and the inside layers. That's because the star is not quite wide enough to allow any type of infill to fit in there with a .4 nozzle. The way to combat this is to lower the actual size of your nozzle. If you have a .4, set it to manual. Instead of being .48, lower it down to like .41. You then can do the outside layer and it will have space to do an infill properly. So. Um, yeah, so this is basically because of that gap, this is a one-time use thing. Uh, you really shouldn't reuse PLA prints when you're doing with raw dough, but you can if you really want to. But this definitely because stuff will get stuck stuck up in these uh, in these uh, perimeters here. Uh, this definitely is a one-time use model, and then I'm going to chuck it. But I do have refined print settings for this that I can use when we need to use it again in the future. So last thing I have here is uh, this is a hard drive bracket that I designed or took a design mutilated it and made my own design out of it. So here's actually it with the hard drive connected to it. And uh, it's very, very, it's nice and rigid. There's no issues there. Um, it's 20% infill, the three top, three bottom layers, and uh, two perimeters. Actually, this one was three perimeters. Uh, for the big one, the little one was two perimeters. But it came out great. Um, it, it printed very well. Here it is with the SSD. A little different version of it. Uh, again, this came out great, no issues at all. It prints flat like so here, and then it prints up this wall so it's nice and, and sturdy. No, I have any issues with bond, layer bonding at all. This, this filament prints like a dream. So toner plastics, rich teal PLA, guys. This stuff prints like a dream. I'm not gonna give you a bad rap on it. Uh, I will say this filament was provided free to me by toner plastics. They sent it to me along with the Pet G. Uh, filament sample, which we'll be filming very soon, but regardless of that, this filament prints great. I would put this on par with Inland's PLA and Hatchbox. Inland and Hatchbox are basically the standard for 3D printing for people here in America. I don't know how it is available in other parts of the world, but if you're in America, you're printing with Hatchbox, you're printing with Inland. It prints like a dream, and so does this. I had hardly any issues whatsoever printing this at 0.2 0.15, uh, 0.1 layer heights. N hardly any issues anywhere at all. It didn't have to restart prints aside from me screwing up my bed level on the FT5, but you know, that just kind of happens from time to time. Again, all of these little parts here that I'm uh, modeling and doing all my test prints with, all printed out great. Uh, this one did have a little bit of lifting, but on both these big prints, on all of the Paw Patrol cookie cutters, no lifting whatsoever no lifting this was the one and only print in this color that lifted and again it was just this one corner i printed directly on a print bite i didn't actually try this on glass because i uh kind of frankly didn't want to um didn't really want to and i didn't feel like switching out the plates i will try and do that a little more later but y you guys really should be having print bite right now i'm gonna be switching to build tack here very soon and give that a thorough thorough print on i've been using print fight for a month now Build tack is on the docket, but anyways, this stuff printed great on that. I can't see any reason why I would have a problem on glass. Prints like butter. I like it. You should like it too. Put a link down below where you can find it at their website. And uh, that's that. It's good stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, you can hit the, hit the subscribe button down below. Little bell icon. You know whenever I upload a video, you'll get notified of it. If you want to help support the channel, you can do that in many ways via Patreon. Send me a dollar or more. I greatly appreciate anything you guys send to me. You can do that via my affiliate links with Amazon or Maker Geeks. And if you kind of just want to see what I'm doing, down below you'll see links to my social media. And you can always follow along and see the prints that I'm doing before I actually upload any of these videos. So until next time, guys, happy printing.